Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today in our simple camping series is we would talk about a couple simple ways to set up a plow point type shelter. And I've done videos in the past using a plow point design shelter, and I've probably even done videos in the past on how to set one up. But because this is a simple camping series, and this is probably one of my favorite tarp setups, I want to show you how to set this plow point shelter up both with an immovable object like a tree that you can tie off to or if you don't have trees available I'm going to show you how to cut a sapling down and use a single pole to affect this shelter as well and a square tarp works best for this although you can use a rectangular tarp and you can do some folding to make it a square or use the longish part of it as an awning like we did in the video with the white tarp at the beginning of this series we had a rectangle tarp set up as a problem we had the extra material on the rectangular side as an awning off to one side. What I've got here is my normal bedroll and I carry my equipment in lots of different ways and I show lots of different looks so that people can decide what they think is best for them. But for conveyance purposes, if you have a four-wheeler, if you have a horse, if you have something that you can easily carry a bedroll on, then a bedroll type setup like this works out very well and basically this is just an 8x8 oilcloth tarp with two Pathfinder wool blankets rolled up inside, some ropes and stakes. And we're going to pull this out we're going to set a shelter up first freestanding with one pole. Then we're going to go off into the woods here and set up more of a hunter style type camp in our simple camping series. Stay with me. Okay the first thing we should probably talk about is this bed roll because the way it's set up now it's rolled up in a fashion that if I want to just roll it out and sleep on the ground, I can do that. So unrolling this bed roll, we have a couple ropes in here. And if we pull it all the way out, like this, the configuration that we have here is very simple. We have the tarp basically folded in half here. And your sides are over here like this and these could be left tucked under this side would be left tucked under if you were going to sleep in this configuration and then this would cover over you to give you that ground cover this blanket would be the one that you would roll yourself up into like I've done in many of the wool blanket videos and then I have another blanket here at the bottom that's the same size but it's basically rolled up in a, or folded up I should say so that it only covers the core area of your body and it's double thickness it's probably one two three at least four layers of this wool to give me a ground pad per se to help battle conduction from the ground and then I would just roll up or swaddle myself into the larger the other wool blanket here opened up and lay on top of this so this would be a very easy ground sleeping setup just like it is right now and then you would just pull this over the top of you for extra warmth to trap heat. So that setup works really well for something that's on the fly. But again, like I said, you're probably not going to want to carry this bedroll on your back very far because it does have some weight to it. You're probably looking at 20 pounds uh, between the two wool blankets and the tarp and the riggings for it, the leather strappings, probably 20 pounds. But if you had a horse, a sled, a canoe, some type of conveyance like a Rokon or an ATV, this is an easy, quick, convenient setup. If you get to the point where you just want to camp for the night really quick, and you don't want to set up a bunch of shelter and mess around, this comes undone and goes back together very, very easily. And it is a workable scenario for some pretty cold temperatures. And you can always build a long fire one step away and take advantage of that heat as well throughout the night. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move these blankets out of the way for the moment. I'm not going to get them too far unfolded here. So when I put this back together at the moment, but I'm just going to kind of fold them up out of the way for the moment and get to the tarp, and that's what we're going to use to set up our shelter with. Now, once we did that, we would use this configuration on the ground directly, or we could put some type of a vapor barrier on the ground, like a trash bag, an emergency space blanket, or some type of gum blanket if we were trying to be very traditional about it. And in that case, I would add a gum blanket to the setup, which would add probably another three to four pounds to the setup. But again, with conveyance, you really don't have to worry too much about that. But these two wool blankets 
are the really versatile part of this thing because there's so many different configurations you can put them in to sleep for the night. Okay, let's first talk about the stick or the one pole that we're going to use. And what I generally do is I'll cut a green sapling that is, I want the fork to be right at head level on that thing. I like the peak of a wedge type shelter, a plow point type shelter, to be fairly high if it's a normal camping scenario. If it's really, really cold outside, then I might drop that peak down a little bit to trap more heat. Now the other component to this is just a toggle. I love toggles. This is just a heavy, probably one inch and maybe one inch and a quarter diameter stick that's about eight or 10 inches long. And I'm gonna use that as a toggle in my V, in my fork, to hold up my tarp and my ropes, my support ropes, guy lines are gonna come out from that as well. I'll show you how that sets up right now. Now I generally carry two pieces of some type of cordia rope that are about two full poles or a little over 12 feet or right at 12 feet long. And I do this for a lot of reasons because I can use these in different ways to set up different shelters. But if I need the one long length, like for these guy lines or for like a ridge line, then I can just connect them together really quickly with an easy fisherman's knot that we've talked about in some of our other videos. And that will give us a single piece of cordage that we can use like this. So we're gonna tie that fisherman's knot in here and that's gonna give us two tails that are about 12 feet long. And then we're going to come up here, we're just gonna offset that knot just a little bit and we're gonna put a lark's head knot into this toggle, just like this. A simple lark's head knot is all you need. And this is going to go through the corner of our tarp. All right, so here is the corner of our tarp on the diagonal, if I'm using a square tarp. And I'm just going to take this lark head, this whole thing, put it up through one of my tie-out loops or stake loops, just like this, and then put my toggle through it just like this. And now what I've done is I've not only toggled off my tarp, but I've also got two rope lines here to use for staking out this tarp at the same time. And what's going to happen is when I put this one pole up, this one pole will catch just like this. I'll put the ropes on the outside, the to toggle to the inside just like this, and it will be set up very similar to this when it's all said and done with one guy line going in each direction away from the pole itself. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to this corner and I'm going to pull it away from everything and stake it in. Now, the first tool I make is a baton because, especially if I'm hitting metal stakes, I don't want to do that with my axe. And a wooden baton comes in really handy for a lot of things around camp, so it's generally the first tool that I'll make. Now, once you have your tarp spread out, you've got a stake in the back corner, You've got this set up. If you simply come up here and stand this pole up, it will draw the corners in of the tarp to about the point they're going to need to be staked. So then you can just come down and set this back down and temporarily tack both, corners, both of your outside corners. Okay, so now we just need a couple temporary loops on our line. To do that, we're just going to come up here and double the line over. We're going to wrap one to the inside like that. And then we're going to come around the outside and use that as a stop bite with a slippery hitch, just like this. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow that rope to be tightened up, but it's going to come undone real easy as well. To easily enough pick this up, just like this. Stand this straight up and pull it out and figure out about where we are. And you can see we need to make some adjustments to our stakes and that's fine. But for now it'll allow us to pull against this side and put a stake in the ground here. Pulling on one side of the corner just like this.
And again, I'm not driving anything home yet. And then come over here and pull against the other side real quick to put the second loop in the ground, like this. Now I've got something I can look at and say, okay, now I need to make my adjustments. So I'll come over here and pull this tick taut, just like this. That one's going just about all the way in at this point. And I'll do the same thing over here. Now with a setup like this, what I generally favor is my fire on one side of this diamond or this plow point. I don't want it straight out in the front. I want it off to one side out in here. So I'll just go one step from here and I'd have my cook fire out in here somewhere. It's far enough away from any ropes in my tarp that way, but I also have basically three sides catching that heat going in. Yes, you've got some heat escape here and up here, but you're still gonna get some reflectivity in here as well. And I just find that it works better that way for me because it allows me a bigger open area with no interference of the pole to be out here cooking and then get back into cover if I need to and things like that. Okay, so let's talk about this stake loop that we put in here that was temporary. Now, if we want to, we can come in here and just pull this out. And we've gone right back to the beginning point of our slip knot that we always use. So we can tighten this thing up, come in here, go around our line three times, go around both lines one time. Just like this and tie that same slippery hitch in there and now we have a knot that we can move that's self-tightening and all we did was put a couple extra loops in it so it makes a real simple system that you can use to move things around if you need to and it's going to come undone real easy when the time comes as well okay so let's talk real quick about this natural rope for a minute obviously this stuff's not going to last forever because it's a natural material so it's going to be about a season if you're using it a lot. But if it's rolled up in a bedroll, it's gonna last for a long, long time. If you leave it out and you leave it set up, it's gonna rot away fairly quickly, so you're gonna to have to replace it often. But the advantages of this are A, it looks more traditional. I really like that. B, it also gives you a tender source in an emergency because it is a natural fiber. But one of the things I really like about it is I'm a big fan of these Yuko candle lanterns. And because this is a, a rope, I can actually separate those fibers and slide that hook in between two of those lays just like that and virtually hang that lantern anywhere I want to on that piece of rope and it's good secure it's not going to slide up and down the rope I don't have to worry about putting any toggles or loops or anything like that in there and I can hang it anywhere I want to on these ropes as close to my camp or as far away or out here by where I'm working on the fire wherever I want to along the length of any of these ropes this lamp will hang very comfortably even on an angle without sliding and I like that. Okay, so let's talk about pulling these metal stakes. Again, I never pound the eye into the ground because I can just take a doubled up piece of rope, throw it in there, wrap my hand around one side of it, I've got the loop on the other side, and just lean back to pull the stake. I'm not pulling with my arms, I'm not pulling my back, I'm basically just leaning back with my weight to yank that stake out of the ground. It's a really simple way to pull these metal stakes, and that's why I like these so well. They're robust, they're heavy duty, they last forever, they're easy to drive, and they're easy to pull out. 